everyone, and welcome to what I consider to be the ultimate paint your guitar at home guide with rattle cans. We're starting with a bass. It's a silver tone bass, and it's got a lot of body issues. And to top that off, the body's made of plywood. So we're not going to be going through the whole clear coat and the entire paint because that might be what's holding this body together. We are using 80 grit sandpaper, and this is just a random orbital sander, not a high power one. I think it was, uh, this is like the $15 Walmart one. So you can get one yourself pretty cheap. Doing the front and the back with the orbital. Sanding is super important. So this is 80 grit. This is definitely not a finishing or polishing or even really a good sanding grit. This is for cutting and cutting deep. And this clear coat was thick, so that's what I'm using. All right, on the edges, I'm using the same grit sandpaper, and I'm being careful and using my hands. You can easily burn through an edge, and uh, this becomes much more important when doing your final finishing. Right now, we're basically trying to get most of the clear coat gone and sand through uh, any bad areas so that we can patch them. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. This has a huge hole on the side. Be very careful on the inside of the horn, as well as on the edges itself of the horn. Uh, we're going to be using Bondo to fill the hole I was talking about on the side. And Bondo is used for cars primarily, but it's a great filler. And since it was cold outside, even though my Bondo had only been sitting out here with me for about 10 minutes, I went ahead and warmed it up using a heat gun. If you guys have never used a heat gun, be careful. They do get really hot really fast. They are much, much more powerful than a hair dryer. So putting the hardener onto the Bondo, which I also warmed up, uh, just use a little strip. Now this is a little bit overkill. I use a little bit extra hardener because I want to get that Bondo to set and dry uh, faster. So you have to chop it in there a little bit and then press down. Um, just push really hard and mix it. Make sure it's very, very well mixed because anything that's gray basically will never dry. Um, anything that's red is going to dry really fast, so you have to mix it up and make it into a sort of pink color. And that's why I'm kind of showing you the whole process here. You just kind of smash it into itself, fold it over in there, over and over until you have um, basically a pink consistency all the way through. Just like that. And now uh, I'm going a little bit overboard on the edge and then I'm smoothing it off. I want to press it down onto the exposed wood because, uh, like I said, that hole is really bad. And then that way it'll have something to grip to. But this stuff does get hard, so you don't want to leave a bunch of extra on there because then you'll have to sand all that off as well. And that can be a huge pain in the butt. And I'm sorry for the angle over there. I also had a little spot on the neck joint that had a chip out of it, so I filled that as well. All right, that's just taking a look at the patch that's filled. I took it inside to dry. About an hour and a half later, came back and it's sandable. This was 220 grit paper I was using, which uh, I then used on the entire body. You can also wrap it on a block if you want to get a sharper, you know, like this is an edge, so if you want to get a sharper edge on there, you can do that. Use your fingers, your hands, to feel what your eyes can't see. A lot of times something may look smooth, but it won't be smooth at all. So there we go. That's the whole patch in there. And here's a little patch on the neck area. And then we're ready for the next step, which is going to be primer. So I built one of these little stands. Um, this was actually inspired by Brad Angove, another YouTuber who does a lot of awesome paint jobs. Go check out his channel. Uh, he's grown a lot and his uh, finishes are fantastic, so go check him out. He's got a lot of cool ideas. Alright, so here's primer. 
and we're going to talk about the primer here in a second. But what you want to do is start off the body and take one line all the way across and go off the body about 8 to 10 inches from your surface. You go in one pattern like this and then later on you're going to come back and alternate stripes, so to speak. So that's the edge. I like going a long ways across my edges and uh, the body cut away. You just paint it just like you'd be painting the side. So it's important to start off the body and end off the body so that you don't stop and spray too much in one spot and cause runs. In this stage though, working with the primer, if it runs it's perfectly okay. You have plenty of time to sand out any runs and uh, reapply some primer in the area if necessary later on. You'll see that's what it's all about in this stage is getting everything nice and flat and smooth. Just be thorough and take your time because this is the uh, this is the period of time where you have time to take, so to speak. You can mess up on a primer job and go back and sand it. It's not hard at all. So I'm alternating my stripes to get as much coverage as possible. It takes a long time to learn how to do decent finishes at home, especially when you don't have a controlled environment, which I don't, and you only use rattle cans, which I pretty much do bust out the gun every once in a while. So primer I think is very very important it's the last step before you put your color on and when you put your color on you need to have that base perfect because the primer will give things away see look this is where we worked earlier and I'm sorry about the noise I'm on my porch this is the patch we, we put in earlier for the damaged wood and you can see the primer this is the first coat shows that so we'll have to do a little extra smoothing on that part for the most part it came out pretty good um, you see there's no big scratches or anything on the back. I'm going to sand this down with 220, do one more coat of primer. I also chose a color of primer that is close to the color that I'm putting on here. Now you can use, if you want to make a color pop, you want to use a white primer if you can find one. If you have a dark black color, you want to use a black primer. If you, um, like what I'm doing with the cobalt blue that's going to go on this guitar, you want to use uh, this kind of steely gray primer. So there's dark gray, there's light gray. It all depends on your final coat. So primer is very important. Make sure you choose your color wisely. And this coat is here to be sanded down and then recoated with another coat of primer to be sanded with 400 so it's smoother. So all we're trying to do is get a really smooth base for that paint. It's still got to adhere, but the primer is going to allow that paint to adhere as well as boost the color of whatever you put on top of it. So just remember that when you're priming your guitar. Because uh, if you use a black primer, your red's going to be really dark and so on. So using a 320 grit pad, I am going over the primer, being careful of my edges of course, and also you have to be careful around the screw holes because they can open up on you if you're not paying attention. I do want to say, you know, if this video is a little bit slower than most of my other ones, it's because I'm trying to let the guys at home who don't know how to do any of this, I'm trying to get everything in here I can. You know, that's what my channel is about. It's basically about empowering everybody to be creative. I think everybody can do things like this and just make their own little world a better place. So once you have uh, full coverage, once you get the whole thing sanded, I like to let it breathe, which means let it set for a while. Okay, so I use ammonia-free Windex to clean in between primer coats, and uh, we're gonna hopefully make the patch completely disappear uh, under the next primer coat. Also, before I put the next coat on, since it's a little cold outside, I had this sitting in hot water, it's been in there for about 10 minutes. And uh, before I spray the body, I'm going to warm the body with a heat gun a little bit and bring it in the house to dry because you don't want to leave it out in the cold to dry. Warming it up with the heat gun again, it was uh, around 50 degrees on the porch. So definitely got to warm the surface. Don't get this too close to the surface because you'll burn through. So this is the second coat of primer. I'm a little bit farther away than I was for the first. 
Well, I do two coats at a time, so this is technically the third coat. But um, I'm a little bit farther away than I was the first. And I was only going to do two coats, but I turned out to need three, which you'll see here in just a second. I'll tell you why. Again, alternate your stripes, start off the body and end off the body. This is a little drop of water that uh, live action me is gonna talk about here in just a second. All right, this was a little drop of, I guess, water that was still on the can. Even though I dried it, there was still a little drop of water on the can from when it was sitting in that water and it hit the finish. So we're gonna have to sand a little bit extra in that area. We're gonna have to pay real close attention when we come back and do our final sand before paint. And we're gonna have to hit that and make sure we can get that out. All right, so letting this dry again, we're gonna take a second. A little bit more about primer. I use this Rust-Oleum two-time coverage primer because it sands well, it dries quickly, but most importantly, it uh, it covers very well without running. So about 10 inches away, eight to 10 inches for your first coat of primer when you do the spray. And then your second coat, which you do while the first one's still wet, you can see that in the video. Um, I fan it back a little bit to about 10 to 12 inches for that second coat to get a little more coverage. And then I come back and repeat the process one more time. And I found a couple spots on here. We're gonna have to sand a little extra. I may even have to spot fill just a bit. And then a little bit more primer, and then we can finally get the color. But yeah, check this out. Rust-Oleum primer, big old primer on the can. You can get this at Walmart just about anywhere. I've tried Krylon, I've tried just about every company I can find, Duplicolor, all that. This one works the best for me. Quick update. These are a couple tiny post primer patches where I saw some little bitty tiny divots. Um, it's much smaller than you can actually see on there, but they're uh, filled in now. I'll sand those down on the next coat. Uh, I'll sand these down when I sand this primer down here in just a second, and I will then do one more very light coat of primer, sand that, and then paint. So just because of these little spots, I've decided one more coat of primer. That's what it's going to take. So here we are doing the last and lightest coat of primer. I had previously sanded the body down with 400 grit before doing this, which is as fine as you really need to go with primer. And this is a just an abrasive pad, just your standard kitchen sponge with the scotch pad on the back. And I do want to mention, after you sand something, you shouldn't wait more than 24 hours before you paint because dust and things can accumulate on the surface. You want to make sure you have a clean surface. And uh, primer you can usually paint or you can usually uh, sand your primer within about an hour to two hours of it setting up. But always read your cans and make sure. If you want to be safe, you can wait overnight. This scotch pad abrades the surface enough without leaving scratches to accept the paint. So that way when we lay our paint down in the next episode, it has a really nice surface to adhere to, but it's also very smooth. So join me next time, guys. I certainly appreciate it. We're going with this beautiful blue color. And uh, we'll talk all about paint and everything you need to know to get your guitar painted. Like, share, and subscribe as always. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, definitely hit me with a thumbs up if you like this series because it's, it's done. The next one will be out soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.